Okay, so this is going to be a short talk about glug twists of roll spun knots, which is a based on a project that's joint work with Hannah Schwartz. Before I start, of course, I just want to thank the organizers for giving me the opportunity to give this lighting talk, uh, and to thank all of you for being willing to listen to me talk about this stuff. So, uh, in the short time, I have three goals. I'm going to tell you what a glug twist is. I'm going to tell you what a roll spun knot is. And then I'm going to tell you about a theorem that Anna and I proved. All right. So first up, uh, what is a glock twist? So a glock twist is something that you do to a four manifold, which in this case is always going to be the four sphere. If you have a smoothly embedded two sphere in the four sphere, then a tube of the neighborhood is always diffeomorphic to S2 cross D2. And so you can cut it out and re-glue it by an automorphism of the boundary which in this case is S2 cross S1. Uh, and I don't know about you, but my favorite automorphism of S2 cross S1 is this map tau here, sometimes called the Gluck twist. So what do you do? Well, as you walk around the S1 direction, you rotate the two sphere uh, all the way through 360 degrees. Do you get back to where you came from? And so that's you know some non-trivial automorphism. You can cut out a tube in the neighborhood and re-glue it with a twist. So the first thing you might ask, you know, is, is this still the four sphere? Um, and so you can check that, well, it's a homotopy four sphere at least. And so by, you know, Friedman's theorem, the resulting four manifold is always homeomorphic to the four sphere. However, it's, you know, it's still an open question whether or not all Gluck twists are standard. In other words, diffeomorphic to the standard four sphere. Um, of course, this is also related to the open question of whether there exists an exotic force sphere at all. So, you know, if you're interested in this sort of thing, the first thing you might do is try to cook up some interesting embeddings of two spheres in the force sphere. Try to, you know, try to perform gluck twists on them. So one, you know, one nice way to do this is with what's called um, spinning constructions. So what do you do? Well, starting with a, an honest knot in the three sphere, you can remove a little three ball centered on a point on the knot. And what you're left with is like a knotted, not a tangle in the three ball. And you can think about this in a couple of ways, but one way is just, if you just cross that whole picture with an interval, what you'll get is a four ball together with a properly embedded disc. And that properly embedded disc is sort of the, the trace of this knotted arc through the sort of the, each of the B3 slices. And on the boundary you see, uh, the three sphere together with K connected summits mirror actually. That's the one thing you could do if you wanted to make an interesting embedding of a two sphere and a four sphere is you could just double this picture. So if you do that, you'll get usually what's called the spin of the knot. One reason that I like this particular description of it though, is that it's clear that you can modify this by inserting some sort of concordance. And so if you have, um, a self-concordance of a knot connected sum with its mirror, you could sort of just paste that in there and you'd have some, some new embedding of a two sphere and a four sphere. So you'd have something like this. You'd have the, you know, a four ball with this disc on top, this concordance. So in other words, a, an embedding of an annulus in S3 cross I with the right boundaries. And then at the bottom, you see this four ball and the disc again. So I don't know about you, but my favorite self-concordance of a knot connected sum with its mirror is, uh, is the following thing, which is what maybe we'll call the, the roll spin concordance. What do you do? Well, you, you know, imagine one of the summands being very, very small, and you drag it for a loop through the other summand so you get back to where you started from. And so that, you know, that isotopy traces out a concordance, which you can paste in this picture. And the resulting thing is what we call the roll spin. Okay, so you know, gluck twists have been studied for a long time. In particular, it's known that gluck twists of spun knots are standard, more generally, twist spun knots, and even in some cases, uh, roll spun knots. Uh, so, for instance, if you start with a torus knot, the roll spun is, is the gluck twist of the roll spin is known to be standard. But it's still an open question whether or not gluck twists of all roll spun knots are standard. And so, Hannah and I prove the following theorem. If you start with a knot that has a knotting number equal to one, 
then the Gluck twist of that roll spun knot is standard. Um, we actually proved something a little bit more general, but this is what you get in the roll spin case. Um, and so for our purposes, it's very important that the, the knot that you start with does have a knotting number equal to one. Um, you sort of use some recent work of, of Jason Joseph, uh, Mike Klug, Ben Rubick, and Hannah Schwartz to relate this, this surgery to a torus surgery, which you also know as standard. But it's, you know, it leaves open um, a lot of interesting questions about you know, higher knotting numbers or just roll spins in general. Anyways, that's all I have to say for now. So thanks for listening. <laughs>